I'm Sophia of SoScript Co. I started that small business while I was an undergrad at Penn. I graduated in 2019 and I'm currently in the Graduate School of Education. So um, that business actually started out of necessity. My older sister was graduating a year ahead of me and she doesn't exactly consider herself creative. So we were talking about what to put on her graduation cap knowing that I was gonna be the one to paint it. And then I realized a lot of people might need this. And so I started a business. Um, I started sharing this online and when it gained popularity, I also started shipping graduation cap toppers on paper. Um, to people around the country. So today I'm going to show how to do both and maybe you want to watch both and you'll decide which one you'd prefer to do. But I also wanted to show you my examples here. The one that started it all first is my sisters. Since we're learning from a distance this semester, I'm able to show you the ones that we have at home. So this is one that started it all. And then when I graduated, um, this was the one I did for myself. But I've done so many, whether it was just a quote or a full painting on the entire cap, um, I can give you some tips on how to do all of those. And you guys can now judge for yourselves, like who's this chick that I'm learning from? You can judge whether you wanna learn from me now. Okay, so we'll get started. In order to paint your graduation cap topper, we have our black piece of paper, a thick piece of cardstock, something like that. And the first thing you're going to do is wash your hands. So anytime you're working with dark colored paper, your finger oils leave smudges everywhere and you don't want that to mess up your look in the final product. So wash your hands and then come back. Okay, so then your first step is going to be to measure out your graduation cap if you already have it. And if you don't, we're just gonna estimate. So um, basically what we're gonna do is cut out a piece of your cardstock paper to the size of your graduation cap and you can make it exact if you have it but if you don't i usually do nine inches by nine inches which is what i did here you can do nine and a quarter but generally speaking i like to err on the side of being a little bit smaller rather than too big because if you make a really nice design and then you put it on your cap and it's too big and you have all this paper hanging off you might want to cut the edges and you don't want to mess up your design. So err on the side of being a little bit smaller than the graduation cap. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is to make this hole. So the first thing we're going to do is measure from each diagonal, from corner to corner, and find the center where those two lines intersect. And that's where I placed my nickel trace the circle of that nickel and use my X-Acto knife to cut it out. Now, I have a cutting mat. If you have one, great. If you don't, try using um, your cutting board from your kitchen if it's not really gross. Um, you wanna use a piece of thick cardboard from a box outside on your patio, whatever works. Just some place where you're not going to scratch the surface and people will be upset with you. So whatever it is you choose to use, uh, use that to cut out your circle and you're pretty much at this spot now, okay? So I always do my pencil lines. You can still kind of see them really lightly so that way I can erase afterwards. Um, so typically you're gonna do this on cardstock. I'm using a thick board today so that way this wasn't flopping around as I was showing you. So I'm gonna erase my pencil lines and then I'm gonna switch cameras so that way you guys can see what I'm doing. So we'll need our paintbrushes. We have a cup of water here, napkin to wipe off um, our brushes in case we need, um, pencil and eraser, ruler and our actual graduation cap topper. So what we're gonna start by doing is planning out whatever it is you want your graduation cap to say. Most people want a quote on there, something funny, something that says their name or their degree or their school, whatever it is. Whatever quote you want, you're gonna place that first. Any embellishments will have to fit around that rather than painting the border and all the cute stuff and then suddenly you don't have space for the words. So let's plan out the words first. That's where I grab my ruler and Again, I go to my diagonals and I draw a straight line. And then depending on how many words you wanna fit on there, you're gonna to have to just kind of plan accordingly. My ruler is really thick and it's three inches wide. So if I didn't have a lot to say, maybe I would have like three inch gap between my center line and my top line. 
But if you have, if you have like a whole paragraph you're trying to write on there, then you're gonna have to make the line spacing even smaller. Um, for the sake of this example, I'll just do three lines. So that's what we have so far. Now, obviously in front of your own eyes, it might be easier to see than the way you're seeing it on the screen, but I hope this angle still captures it well and you're able to follow along. Um, so I am gonna write class of 2021. Now, um, I'm not gonna show it here, but typically I would plan out how I'm gonna lay out these letters because that's three words, basically class of 2021. I could do it all in one line, and figure out how to center that. Or I could do three lines, but in this case, because it's a graduation cap topper, one of the limitations is that you will have this hole here that allows the button on the cap to slide through. Um, if you don't mind painting on your graduation cap to fill in that spot, I guess you could do that as well. Um, but for me, I'm going to avoid this button. Something that I recommend doing is to plan out your lettering so that way you don't have like for example, the word class, you don't start the word here and then continue it on this side. As best as you can, try to put your words on different sides of it without making the letters look awkward. So I'm just gonna go with class of at the top and 2021 at the bottom. Now I'm not perfectly centered, but that's okay. Grab your white paint, and that is gonna be your first coat for everything. Basically, when you're working on a dark page, most of your colors are not gonna show up as vibrantly as if they have white underneath. So for all of our designs, we're gonna start with white paint just paint and trace over those. Okay, so typically if you go a little bit slower <laughs> with a smaller brush, you'll get amazing results. So the next step is to let this dry completely because the last thing we wanna do is mess up this entire topper. So now that this is mostly dry, you can do another coat of white if you'd like to make the letters even brighter. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my eraser to erase some of these lines. So that's why I say start by writing these very gently. Okay, full disclosure, I just smudged that. So you can see where I've already started to cover in black paint. If you make a mistake like that too, you can just put a little black paint on your brush. So I grab just a little bit. Now very lightly in very light layers, cover the white that got messed up. So if while you're painting, your brush starts to pick up some of the white and it starts to mix, let it dry, do another thin layer of black. Let it dry, do another thin layer of black, okay? So there we go, I guess it was a good thing I made a mistake. Hopefully that helps someone who does the same. But the next step we're going to do is create our border. On this one, we'll do, I don't know, a bunch of leaves, I've been enjoying that lately. So I'm going to grab my different shades of green. I think for any time that you're painting something organic, it's nice to have a mixture of different colors. If you wanna do green and then mix in a little bit of yellow or hints of blue, giving you some variation makes it look so nice. So I'm gonna pull my messy little palette off to the side and put my greens here. And then 
if I wanted to add yellows or greens or blues, I could do that as well. So while that's sitting here, I'm gonna just very quickly map out where I want my leaves and I'm gonna put them in white. So we still have some acrylic paint white here and we're just gonna put these leaves everywhere. <laughs> so I'm gonna start from, let's say from the edge. And so what this does is help our colors show through a little bit nicer. It's like if you're painting a wall and you prime it first. Oh, that's a perfect example. You're gonna prime this first so that way your colors show through brightly. So that's it. Now I'm gonna use my green paint that I put to the side and we'll paint on top of the white paint that's already here. Now, as I do this, I'm going to mix a little bit of each color to create different shades. And you'll see as I paint each leaf, I'm not gonna do just one individual color at a time. I'm going to mix them. So I should start with one of the ones that are already dry for sure. So I don't know if you can see that well, but we have a mix of colors. Let me add in the third green so that way you can really see the distinction between those two. And we'll just blend them in together. step other than you know wiping your fingers with all the messes is to let this dry as well um, and typically I add some little dots and embellishments if you have any paint markers this is where I would add some gold dots in that if you want to put rhinestones and you want to go to like a dollar store and get some sparkly parts to put on here or glue and glitter that's where you can go crazy with that so right now I'm just gonna add some plain white dots to the mix just to add a little something. There we have it. And when it's dry, it's all good to go and you'll be able to place this on top of your graduation cap and you'll have a finished piece. This is our finished piece on here. And once you're done, when this is all completely dry, you can put this on your graduation cap and your button will line up. And if you want to secure it more, you could do hot glue, um, double-sided tape, normal glue, and just see what works best for you to be able to stick yours on your graduation cap. So I'm gonna just test it out with one of this, these ones. All right, so doing it this way still allows you to pull your graduation cap tassel through and have that showing through. I hope this was fun. I hope you enjoyed the process. Share this with your friends and congratulations.